This video is all about the journey the tiny house has been on over the past six months and what a journey it's been. But first, some much needed context. If you've watched the last video I put up here, which was a live stream I did in May, then you'll know I spent most of the past year in constant motion. I got married, drove across Canada and back, and we drove all over New Zealand in a camper van. In January, my wife and I returned to Vancouver and immediately moved to Vancouver Island. If you don't know, Vancouver, the city, is on the mainland. Vancouver Island is a rather large island off the west coast. You need to take a ferry or a plane to get there. The tiny house during all of this was still in the mainland, in an RV storage lot. You know it well. So in March, as the world began shutting down and travel to and from the island became less predictable, we decided to act fast and get the tiny house over here. It was a grueling couple of days. We had to rent a truck on the mainland and then return it the next day. So that's four ferry trips total, two hours each, plus all the driving. But the tiny house handled the highway speeds like a champ. I'm still pretty impressed by how well it does that. And we had absolutely no trouble at the ferry. It was just roll right on and off we went. The tiny then sat in front of our house until July. I thought I was going to work on it a bunch, but I just could not find the motivation. The world had turned upside down and we had just moved to a new strange place and couldn't really do the normal things you do when you move to a new place. So everything was just weird, but we had the tiny and we had a plan. And in June, we finally started to put that plan into motion. The tiny had a home, it just needed to move in. And first, that meant clearing the area. So we cleared the area of debris, moved a less desirable dwelling out of the way, felled some suspect looking trees, and mowed the very wild lawn with a very large lawnmower. Moving the tiny house from our place to the homestead was a fairly smooth process. Fortunately, our host had a truck, so we didn't need to rent yet another one. It took a little longer than we planned, so it got dark. That lesson repeats itself constantly. Things will take longer than you think. On July 1st, exactly four years since the start of the build, on July 1st, 2016, we pulled the tiny into position in its new home. <sighs> the tiny house is back where it belongs, which is basically anywhere that isn't an RV storage lot. So let's go inside and see what I've been up to for the past few months. I needed to get a few key things accomplished with the tiny house in a relatively short amount of time. See, the new purpose, the main purpose of the tiny house now, is to be a guest house. And in the age of pandemic, we're being good little citizens and making sure that we don't have friends and family over to our house. So the tiny house has become the perfect little place to self-isolate. And so what would be the most important thing a guest would need, aside from a place to sleep? probably a place to do business. It had been a while since this was purchased. It was really early on in the build that this was bought and I'd completely forgotten what it was all about and how to use it. So first step was figuring out how to use the toilet. It turns out it was actually pretty simple. I'd already had all the holes ready for venting. You need an air intake, and a way to get the air out. But I did have to swap the side the fan was installed, comes pre-installed with the toilet. So that was a little bit of work, but manageable. And then it was just all about throwing some peat moss in the bottom, churning it up a little every time you use it. And that's it, pretty simple. I'll make a full video on it eventually once we've emptied it a few times and really have the process down. Just wanna make sure we really have our shit together before I share it with you fine people. And then I needed a better ladder solution because if our parents are going to be going up and down this thing, it needs to be less deathy. So I deepened the steps by putting just a nice, I think this is maple, it's fancy wood, just on top of the old steps. And we added some handles. Good handles. They're very sturdy. You can shake the house with these things. But of course, there's one final step in the house and it's not so great. So today I'm addressing one of the little details that I often get questioned on, and that is why is this step so big? Because yes, it's a lot to step up and step down for this area, and that's because it's not finished. It needs a stair, which is what I'm cutting today. I'm also testing out this guy that I have plugged in powering the house, which is how all these lights are on, which is 
amazing that I can power the house off this thing. And it's powering, of course, the outdoor outlet, which I have powering the little saw that I'm using to cut this stuff. So being able to do work out here without, you know, a grid hookup is pretty awesome. I'm going to very precariously set these up and try not to kill myself while I do it. That should be good for height. The question is whether or not when you step up, are you gonna hit your head on the, the beam up there? See, I was concerned as you'd step down and then forward that you'd hit your head here, but you actually are already stepping down into the room before even coming close. And coming up, it's even safer because you're stepping forward. I mean, you have to like really be leaning forward. And if you're really leaning forward, I mean, you're gonna duck it anyway. Of course, I'm 5'8", any taller, you already got problems in this house. But hey, I didn't make it for anyone else, did I? 5'8 people only. So, that's it. Finally. Finally. How many times can I go up and down before this thing eventually collapses under me? <laughs> because I haven't secured it yet. Let's not find out. So I added a bit of extra wood to it. I attached the main height makers, that's what I'm calling these, and then just throw on some 2x4 to make sure that it's nice and rigid and strong. This won't be the final version of this step. I, I think I will use the top piece again in the final version, but I always imagined making a little box out of it that you could lift the step and there'd be stuff stored inside. For now, this will work because stuff can at least be stored underneath and it'll be easy to remove when I need to get at the stuff that's underneath the floor of the kitchen. So let's put this in place and see how magnificent it is. How amazing. It's literally just a piece of wood that you can step on. It's so simple. It's so elegant. It should have been there long ago. Wonderful. I've made a few other little improvements as well. The wires that were up here that were gonna be used for lights up in the loft are now outlets and those outlets are controlled by this light switch so it still is kind of just for lights I mean in a roundabout way and then there's this beautiful railing made out of the same steel piping as the handle over here uh, this stuff is pretty cool and I have our gracious host here to thank for the idea this thing is very cool it's basically well it's just an inverter these batteries are essentially being converted to regular old 120 or whatever volts and that's going out of the house and underneath of it and then up back into like the main power for the house and through the actual breakers and through all the outlets and that's what's powering the lights it's pretty damn cool and basically perfect for what we're going to use it for if i haven't mentioned it already this house is fully off grid there's not even an option to be on grid here which if you've followed the channel for a while you know was never my intention for this house but we're making it work. As I mentioned earlier, I have a couple other videos planned for specific things around the house, such as the toilet and this baby right here. And I have a little interview I did with my friend who stayed in the tiny house for a weekend. That one should be fun, check that out. And that brings us up to date. So the tiny house has had already two guests. It's had my wife's mom stay for almost a week, I think. And then my friend stayed for a weekend. And then both of my wife's parents will be staying here this weekend. By the time this goes live, it'll probably have already happened and hopefully was a success. And then after that, next weekend, I've got another friend staying for a night. So, tiny house is getting put to the test. 